anti-liberal, uh, uh, they're, they're pro-Bible, but you listen to me, they're good people, I believe a lot of them are saved people, uh, but there's millions of them in America, and they didn't look down the end, and they didn't look, they were 1940, their church was okay, and they're still in that church because it was okay in 1940. Their church was okay in 1950 and 1960, and because it was okay in 1950 and 1960, hey, hey, back there, hey, hey, Kyle, you better sit up and pay attention, boy. And you say, oh, preacher, don't talk to someone like that. There's a difference between a school kid and a bus kid. He's a school kid. Hey, man, you better pay attention. You chewing gum, swallow it. Now you're supposed to have gum in here. Swallow it. I said swallow Now, Now, uh, th there's a the direction we're going. What direction is he supposed to be going? It's more important how, how, that, than his, the, what, his direction that he's going, amen? Not where he is now, but the direction he's supposed to go. And there's millions of people in these churches. I'll say this. Uh, there's a man, and I'm not, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm not judging the man. I'm not saying anything good about him or bad about him. Personally, I've heard him on the radio. I don't know if he's King James, but I've heard him uh, for about a 10-minute segment. I personally like him. Don't go home and oh, preacher loves this guy. But the guy's name was David Jeremiah. He started Blackhawk Christian church he was at the time he was a very sound i think he's still sound doctrinally he was a sound man he they went soul winning he had a bus ministry and he believed like he went to pastor school back in the early 70s this was a man who went to pastor school was influenced by a john rice was influenced by tom malone was influenced by lester roloff and curtis hudson he was influenced by brother house his influencer were influencers were these men well david jeremiah left town about 18 years ago 15 18 years ago and he went out to california and blackhawk has had a succession of pastors since then who have little by little by little they have changed the direction of the church but there are still members in blackhawk from when david jeremiah was there because it was okay when David Jeremiah was here, and the simple, and they're good people, and I've knocked on doors with people and said, oh, we go to black, oh, this is wonderful. I remember when our church used to do this. I remember when we used to go out. What do you call this? A soul winning? Oh, that's what we called it. We call it visitation, but yeah, the, we did this, witnessing, testifying. I remember when we did this. I've knocked on, hey man, have you ever knocked on doors somebody saved in Blackhawk Baptist? Sure, people all over the place, and they might say, oh yeah, we're saved, oh yeah, we believe that, oh yeah, but when the church started changing directions, the people stayed in it. Why? because the, the wise man, the prudent man, the man that pondereth his feet and lets all his ways established, he looks down the road and he sees where it's going to end up. And now people that go to Blackhawk Baptist, God bless their saved, born again, blood-washed hearts. They tote the NIV Bible. They've got a rock music in their church. They don't go soul in. They don't have standards. Good night in the morning. That the NIV is a devil's Bible. And good blood-washed people. Listen, folks, good godly, well, used to be godly people. People are walking around with the NIV under their under their arm, thinking that they're okay and they're not okay because they didn't look down the road and see where they were going. Amen. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because all they didn't let all their ways be established. And I'm not criticizing Blackhawk Baptist. Please don't get me wrong. I mean, I might someday again, but I'm but I'm not right now. I'm trying to teach you the Bible. Listen, I'll just say this: anybody that carries that says I'm saved. I've been saved by the blood of Christ. I believe Jesus was virgin born. I believe he's resurrected just as he said. I believe he's sitting in heaven just as he said. I believe he was sinless, born of the Virgin Mary. And they tote an NIV Bible is going to face a vengeful God someday. Amen. My Bible says the simple pass on and are what? Punished. They're going to be punished because they went on in their simplicity. Amen, Brother Will? I, Tom Malone still uses a King James Bible. He's 80 some years old. The guy's about 140. And he still carries a King James. Amen. Lee Robertson still preaches the same book. Amen. You know why? Because they let all their ways be established. They didn't turn away. The Bible says, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Don't you change what you believe. And the direction of a ministry is where it's going to end up. You don't judge Three Rivers Baptist Church on what we are today. Judge us on the direction we're headed in today. Don't judge Three Rivers Baptist Church. Don't judge Pastor Jackson. Don't judge the music department, the youth department, the academy, the Sunday school, the bus ministry. Don't judge anything where we are today. Judge us where we are headed to. Amen. Judge us on the direction that we're in. Judge yourself that way too. I'll get to that in a minute. But there's millions of people 
in mainline Protestant churches, saved people, good people, who because the church was okay in 1950, they're still in it in 1999. They'll be in the year 2010. This is where Daddy went to church. This is where Grandpa was baptized. We got Grandpa, you know, he's buried out back out there. We could never leave the church. Dig Grandpa up, take him down someplace else. Because I tell you what, Grandpa wouldn't want to be buried back there right now. Say, Grandpa, you still you told me not to eat? No, 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 me and your grandma, we didn't do that. Now, the direction in any movement, the direction is more important than where they are now. Now, let me give you some points, okay? Now, I'll give you some points, and that's a three-by-five card number one. Only two more to go. Number one, attitude, then, is more important than altitude. Attitude is more important than altitude. Would you say Black Hawk Baptist flies higher than we are at the moment as far as finances, buildings, facilities, uh, uh, membership, uh, numbers? Yeah, they fly higher. But that's not important. Attitude is more important than altitude. Attitude is more important than altitude. Um, I talked to, um, uh, let me flip this over right here. First, now watch. So first, ad your attitude or your direction must be determined or established before you move too quick. You don't want to get up in the air and going off sideways and you're going to hit a pole. You know, if you're taking off and there's buildings I've landed in, uh, you, some of you flown on jets, and I have too. And we landed in St. Louis one time. We flew out of Indianapolis, and uh, we went down to Indianapolis. We flew out of Indianapolis, and there's just a lot of cornfields where you take off out there. But when you, we landed in uh, St. Louis, well, we went by buildings, and we flew by this big RCA dome, or not RCA, but Trans uh, America dome, Trans World Airline dome. And, uh, you know, we were up there. But you know what? If that pilot, when that pilot took off, he took off the same direction and kind of curved. If we, when we went down to uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, if he would have uh, uh, got the altitude but went the wrong direction, he'd have taken out one those buildings did you turn that off is that off back there completely off how many you're still hot it's still hot back there man i'm hot open that door back there would you brother marlin just uh crack just open the um the door put the brick in it just just you know what i'm talking about tony make sure you... let me open this door i hate doing this brother chris runner i can't find a kerosene cans right back there all right, so let me, get, let me get back here now. So first, the attitude or the direction must be determined or established. Why? Because the attitude is more important than the altitude. The direction that you're going in is more important than how high you're flying. Are you listening? The direction that you're going is more important than how high you're flying. You better listen now. This is good, sound doctrine. That's why you don't need to move too quick. That's why Dr. Howes always says this, and I like what Dr. Howes says. He's almost right. Everything I've heard him say generally, uh, he said, uh, uh, if you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription, you're an idiot if you take all the medicine at once, but you're an idiot if you don't eventually take all the medicine. If the doctor gives you 20 pills and says, take these pills every six hours until you, you, know, you feel better or whatever, come back and see me next week. If you, you, if you don't take all the medicine, uh, you, you, you're not going to get better, but if you take it all at once, you're going to get too sick. So the attitude or the direction must be determined or established first. That's why you don't move too quick. Uh, let, let me give you some. Let me just talk to you for a little bit. Let me give you some stuff here. That's why Brother Jackson uh, does all the Sunday school lessons. You know, our church is young. I'm a rebel. I'm young. I'm young. Not only me personally, but we're young. That's why I am trying to determine the the. I'm trying to make sure all our ways are established. You hear? I'm, I'm not going to go to the left hand. I'm not going to go to the right hand. I'm not going to turn it over to anybody that I don't know if their ways are established yet. I'm not going to do that. I write all the Sunday school lessons. I don't write them, but you know, I, you know, if you're a Sunday school teacher's meeting, all the Sunday school, what gets taught in our Sunday school classes here comes from Pastor Jackson. Why? Because I'm trying to establish the direction that we're going. Well, you think, well, is it, and I, I know what some, some, some idiot preachers think there's uh, pastors and people, well, you just think you're everything because of blah, 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 blah. Well, fine, man. If somebody else wants to do Sunday school lessons and they'll do them the way I do them, do them. It'll just take about three or four hours out of my day. That'd be fine. I got three or four hours to read USA Today or something or whatever. It takes time to do those things. But I am like a Rehoboam and not a Solomon. I'm not a Solomon yet. Our church isn't a Solomon yet. We're Rehoboams. And we have to make sure our direction is established and going in the right direction. I mentioned to Brother Mark someday that if we ever decide to show up on time, uh, I, I could use Brother Mark as a, um, just kidding, Brother Mark. Well, kind of just kidding, but I can get Brother Mark, get Brother Mark to be a Sunday school teacher someday. And uh, we talked about, you know, he's got things in his life right now. He wants to get them, and I don't mean sinful things, but I mean his kind of life's kind of upheaval, and he wants to get it all calmed down and relaxed. And someday, maybe Brother Mark could be a Sunday school teacher. Uh, he, but he, he told me in the car yesterday. He said, "Man, we all sit still back over here. I don't know why y'all squirming around. Sit still." He said, um, uh, "Man, I don't think I could do that." I said, "Why not?" He thought he had to write his own lesson. 
Mark thought he went and read his Bible all week, and then he came up with a Sunday school lesson, and then he brought it to the preacher sometime during the week and got approval of it. And I said, no, that's not how it works. I write the lesson and give it to all the teachers, and all the teachers teach the same thing. He said, oh, that'd be a breeze. I said, well, please come tell all the other teachers that. They don't think that, you know. You heard about how you got the new pastor school and for Sunday school teachers and pastors? How have you heard that? You go to school, they fill your mouth with marbles. Every day you take out one marble. When you've lost all your marbles, you're now ready to be a pastor or a Sunday school teacher. That's, a, that's the truth, I'll tell you for sure. All right? So, so I told, no, Mark, you don't write your own lesson. Well, okay, watch this. There are churches that, have, that write their own lessons. All the teachers write their own lessons. Well, what, what, so the pastor is not establishing the way the church is going. And church can go any old way he wants. Oh, so now you've got Sister, uh, Sister Jeanette there, and she's writing her own lessons, and she writes 20 in a row, and then she starts getting off on something. And you find out about it, you say, man, that's not, that's not very good. And now you've got to call Sister Jeanette in and say, Sister Jeanette, I love you. God bless your, you know, your little soul. But uh, you, that lesson you taught, where did you get that? And you can handle it and be all compromising if you want. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to lose Sister Jeanette. You're going to hurt her, and you're going to lose her. Well, bless God, if she, was, if she was submitted to the pastor, she wouldn't have said anything. No, if you would have thought about Proverbs 4.26, you wouldn't have let Sister Jeanette get herself in that box. What do you think the pastor's there for? Amen. He's supposed to head up the ministry uh, here in the church. The music, all the music is, uh, is, is what goes by me. It goes by Mrs. Guy, but it goes by me. We're going to be organized. It's got to be scheduled. I've been in churches where they stand up and say, uh, uh, who's got a song tonight? Sister, Sister Edna, you got a song tonight? Well, I don't know. Come on, Sister Edna. Well, let me get my shoes on. And then they come up to, uh, give, me, give me that to the chord again. Dang, dang, dang. Earl, come play that bass guitar for me, would you? And uh, could you open that harmonica? You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. Am I kidding? You've been there. I, maybe some of you have been in churches like that. I don't know what Sister Edna's been doing all week. Listen, a few weeks ago, if you were here, I really put myself on the spot when that tall fellow back there, I preached a sermon. It was all over. He, he was raising his hand during the sermon. Anybody see him raising his hand during the sermon? Y'all sitting about the first six rows, you don't see him. He's right in front of Brother Terry back there. He kept raising his hand. He's sitting on the aisle right over here where Brother Thompson is. Don't raise your hand, Brother Thompson. And he kept, he kept raising his hand, raising his hand. I was like, well, you got to go to the bathroom? Go ahead. I mean, you know, this, uh, you're not going to ask me or something. This is not clash, you know, where you just stop in the middle of the sermon and say, yes, sir. Okay. And so we get all done. I thought it was all done. Baptized was over. I thought he was going to say something nice and you know, like, boy, that was a good sermon, and I, my heart's been heavy lately, but God bless me today, and, you know, God bless you, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I thought he was going to say. Well, dumb me, you know. What did I do? I didn't let my way be established. I know better than to call on a stranger in a service and say, yes, sir. He could have said anything. He could have rep reprimanded. He could have said anything. I didn't know what he might say. And he, you were here, and he said he wrote a song, and he'd like to sing it for us, and blah, blah, blah. Well, what if the guy came up here and said, I mean, you know, started rapping something out on us? What if he came up here and started, I mean, what do you, what, how could I say yes to that? Obviously, I'll say no. And I, I definitely, definitely explained what we believe here. And, and uh, I, he didn't end up singing. Uh, he didn't walk out happy either. And I'm sorry he wasn't happy. But I'm not, my ways are going to be established here. And I'm not changing for anybody. The direction is a step. Go ahead. Watch. Have you ever heard of it called precedence? Precedence? If I would have let that fellow come up and sing, I would have said precedence. That means that way uh, anybody that wanted to sing, well, man, preacher, I want to sing next week. Well, man, brother, I happen to know that, like, uh, uh, you know, you were drunk last Tuesday. I don't think you ought to be singing this. Oh, but I got right with God on Wednesday, preacher. And Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoso confess and forsake his sins shall find mercy. Now, God gave me mercy. What about you? You're always quoting 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses them all on righteousness. So, preacher, I've been cleansed of that on righteousness. So I think I, even though I got drunk on Tuesday, smoked dope on Wednesday, went to a strip club on Thursday, beat my wife up on Friday, and, and robbed a bank on Saturday, I ought to be able to sing because I confessed it to God. What could I say? Could I wait a minute? What could I say? I have set a precedent by letting a man sing that I knew nothing about. Right? Is that true or not? All right, so so let all thy ways be established. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. I have taught on a do some doctrines here over oh I'll give you this too. Suppose our music program, you guys sit still. I I'm standing closer to the air than anybody else. Just sit still. It can't be that cold. I am, I am um, uh, 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 freezing my legs off. Cold. 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 Cold
cold up here, man. I don't blame you. Good night. Five minutes from now, I'll be all hot again. You know, I have to go back and open it up. So, what? Don't try and be logical, okay? All right. Maybe I will next time we get hot. So, uh, but my legs are cold. I don't know what it is. Uh, suppose, suppose we say this. Suppose I say, Miss Guy, and you're over the music, and I just want you to get the best talent and the best personality I can get. And this is, uh, you can get. Mrs. Guy says, uh, uh, Oh, let's say I do this. I look in the church, and Miss Guy is one of the best talents, a good personality for the music. And I say, I just want to find somebody with the best talent in the church, musical, and the best ability, and I just want to get the best musical talent I can get. And uh, I want you to run our man. You look like a good Christian lady or a good Christian brother, and I want you to run our music program. And they come and say, Well, preacher. How do you want me to run it? And I just say this. Here's what I say. Man, I want you to run it for the glory of God. Well, his viewpoint of glory of God may be different than my viewpoint of glory of God. He may think getting a bunch of long-haired guys in here, oh, man, I got white rat or whatever, the, you know, I got strict line, you know, crosses or whatever they're called, you know. I got those guys to come in and sing for us. Preacher, they're going to sing for us. Man, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They come in with dangling earrings. And I say, what about those? Yeah, but they're cross earrings. And they come in with dangly earrings and long hair. That's what they do it at the other churches. Right. And I promise you, you better listen to me. I promise you, those ministers of music, most times in a mainline church, probably are saved. And they probably think they're doing the right thing. And they probably are good people. And they'd probably help you out if your car was broke down. And they'd probably give you a can of food if you need it. And they'd probably be nice to you. And they think they're doing the right thing. And they, they, in their heart, they probably think they're doing the right thing. But they haven't let their ways be established. They've turned their foot to the right or the left. And Solomon said to Rehoboam, listen, young man, don't you turn to the right or left. Let all thy ways be established. So I said, uh, uh, attitude is more important than altitude. Now, why is my influence on the, the Sunday school lessons? Same reason my influence is on the music, because all my ways are established. I don't have any new ways. You know why? Because I read John Rice. See that guy right there? Brother Hiles. I'm going to a pastor school a week. I think it's a week from now or whatever. I'm going to go Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, and come home for church Wednesday. I'm not going back. I'm going over there. You know why? I want to be influenced by Brother Hiles. You know why? Because he hasn't changed in 50 years. And, and what he has changed, he's changed for the better. Right. What Brother Howes has changed, he's changed to the right. I want to be influenced by guys like J. Frank Norris and Tom Malone and Lester Roloff and, uh, 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 who did I say, Tom Malone? Curtis Hudson and Tom Malone and, and John Rice and, and uh, G.B. Vick and Carl Hatch and William Carey and Adoniram Judson and uh, R.G. Lee. I want to be influenced by men who never let their, their ways were established and they never turned the right or the left. They never did. And that's how our direction, that's why uh, uh, attitude or direction must be determined or established first, and you don't have to move too quick. The doctrines on the church, I've preached them over and over and over, and I'm going to keep preaching on them. Eternal security. I'm getting our ways established. The efficacy of the blood. It's the blood of Christ, not the death of Christ. I've preached on soul winning, faithfulness, be right with your family. I've preached on marriage here over and over and over and over and over, and I'll continue to do it because the divorce rate is skyrocketing across America, way up over 50%, right on its way to 60%, and I see just as many problems in Christian marriages as you do in the world's marriages. Some, some, I preached on the King James Bible. I'll continue to do so. I preached on the bus ministry, old-fashioned preaching. Attitude is more important than altitude. Number one, attitude is more important than altitude. I'll say this. Listen to me very carefully now. If Teresa came to me and I, and I felt like she was a godly teenager, and I'm not saying I do, but if I did feel like she was a godly teenager and walked with God, and she said, Dad, I feel like God wants me to be a nurse. I feel Now, hold on to your hat, what I'm fixing to say, okay? Hold on real tightly. Uh, and I, I feel like God wants me to be a nurse. I think God wants me to be a nurse, and uh, Dad, I'm going to go to Pensacola College to be a nurse. I would say, young lady, you listen to me carefully. For you to be a nurse, I'd rather you go to IPFW Nursing School and stay in a red-hot, independent, fundamental Baptist church right here under the influence of your daddy than go to Pensacola College. Amen. You say you'd rather go to send your daughter to a secular institution, a secular college accredited by the state, who knows, probably unsaved teachers, than send them down to Pensacola College? Yeah, why? Because I know, I know, I know if she's stays in this church, she'll be all right. But if she goes to Pensacola College, I don't trust their direction. Right. Right. Now, I'm not fighting them. I'm not smacking them around. But I, I, don't, I don't trust her. I wouldn't send her to Liberty. 
You mean you'd rather not send her to Jerry Falwell's college, send her to Liberty College, and send her to IPFW? Yeah, I wouldn't send her to 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 um, uh, Thomas Road Baptist Church and Liberty College. She's got two strikes against her there. Where here it'd just be one strike in a secular college compared to being in a red hot independent fundamental church. Why? Because I know our direction. Same thing with the sword of the Lord. Sorry, but same thing with the sword of the Lord. I, I, I say this too. If somebody doesn't like Brother Hiles, I'm not going to fight him, but I'm not going to run around with him. I'm not going to hang around with him. I'm not going to be around with him. I'm going to put away from me a forward mouth. Why? Because you're a Hilesite? No, because their direction is wrong. I'm not a Hilesite. I love Brother Hiles, but I'm 100% Van Zulin. I'm 100% Buenaventura, and I can't even pronounce those stinking names either. <laughs> I'm 100% brown. I'm 100% white. I'm 100%. I'm 100% for James Murphy, just like I'm 100% for Brother Hiles. If Doug Jackson is your friend, I believe in being 100% for you. I don't care what you do. I'm 100%. Oh, all hell, Brother Hiles. No, not all hell, Brother Hiles. But he's been in the ministry for 52 years. He's never, he's never blown it. He's been faithful. He's walked with God. He's got a great ministry. Good night and morning. Why wouldn't I look at Brother Hiles and say his ways are established? Why? Because he got his ways from uh, Norris and Rice, who got their ways from uh, a Scarborough, who got their ways from this guy, who got their ways from this guy, who got their ways from Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let all thy ways be established. So I'd send her to IPFW before I'd send her to Liberty or Pensacola. All right, number one, attitude is more, man, we're doing pretty good with these little three by five cars, aren't we? Attitude is more important than altitude. Number two, attitude, I like this now, now remember, attitude, and that means the direction, the attitude is direction, is, and the direction has to be established, it means your attitude has to be established, is more important than how high you're flying, because number two, attitude eventually determines altitude. Attitude eventually determines altitude. Now we may be a Piper Cub at this church. We may be a Cessna 107. I made that 107 part up. We may be a Piper Club Cub. We may be a Cessna. We may be a single engine that flies uh, uh, 10,000 feet tops altitude. We may be a Cessna that goes up to 15,000. We may be a DC-9 that cruises at 23,000. The Lord may have made a, may eventually make us into a B-52 that can fly at 30,000 feet for hundreds of miles. We may be a 747 that can really go all the way up to the ceiling of over 40,000 feet and has a range of 4,000 miles. Maybe that's the kind of uh, uh, um, altitude that will determine. But attitude always, attitude eventually uh, determines your altitude. So a church that goes up, and I'm going to get to you, say, what about a church though that grows and it runs a thousand, but, but they're not right? I'll get to that on point four, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But attitude eventually determines altitude. Number three, your altitude is determined by God. I said, number one, attitude is more important than altitude. I said, number two, your attitude is eventually determined by, uh, your attitude eventually determines your altitude. And then number three, your altitude is determined by God. Your altitude is determined by God. God's the one to decide if you're a Piper Cub, not you. God is the one to decide if you're a Cessna. Do you know there's guys all over the United States? Brother Guy knows this, and some of you guys with Hiles Anderson, uh, you know a little bit about this. And I'm sure probably um, uh, Brother Polhazi knows people like this, went to school with them. And they wanted to be like Tom Malone. And Tom Malone in his heyday ran three, four, five thousand, didn't he? 7,500. And I'll bet you they went out in the ministry in the first five years, if they didn't, if they didn't run 7,500, the first 10 years they didn't run 7,500, they thought they were failures, didn't they? Brother, I'm telling you, I know dozens of men who went through Hiles Anderson, and they go out in the ministry, and if in the first 10 years they're not running 1,000, they don't have a college, and they don't have a brand new building, and 20 buses sitting out there with brand new paint jobs, they, don't feel, they feel like they've failed. True? Is that true? And, and it's God that determines our altitude. We, oh, this is good. We determine our attitude, not God. We determine our direction. I determine the direction for the church. I do. And if y'all ever vote and say, well, we don't want to, we, preacher, we love you, but we not, we're just not going to, we're not going to stick on the King James now. You want to preach from it, that's fine. You want to quote from it, that's fine. But, but I'm a Sunday school teacher, and I want to carry an NIV Bible, and preacher, I, I want to teach them an NIV. Well, one of us will go. Now, I'm not going to stay at a church when the attitude goes wrong because when the direction goes wrong, guess what? The simple pass on and are punished, but a prudent man foresees the evil and sees where it's going, and they, he knows it's where it's going to end up. And direction is the key. 
So altitude is determined by God. God may decide we're a Piper Cub. Well, we're already past the Piper Cub state, uh, honestly. God may decide we're a Cessna. I think that's where we're at now. God may decide we're a DC-9, or and I think we're headed that direction. God may decide we're a B-52 or a 747. I know dozens of churches, watch, where preachers went and that averaged 20 when they went there, and they averaged 80 now, and they're a strong church. I know dozens of guys, well, many guys, I won't say dozens, but I know several men that went and took churches that were running 60, 40, 50, 60, 60, and they're running 120 now, and it's a good, solid, independent, local work. I know men that took churches that were running 75 and 80, and they're running 200 now, and they're good, solid works. I know some men, Brother Guy, and preach at a church up in Michigan, that um, uh, the church has been there longer than we have, been there, I think, going on five years. He took the church. He started the church. No church at all. He runs about 60 or 70 now. His name's Jeff Lyons. He's a good guy. They got a nice building. It's a good church. He's been there five years in his city as big as our city. The same situation as us, sort of. He's got a nicer building and things, but they runs about 60 or 70. We went up and played a basketball team in Lakeview, Michigan, and Zane Aberger's been there going on 13 years, and they run about uh, 180 to 200 in 13 years. A good, solid work. Why? It's because God determines your altitude. We determine our attitude we determine our direction, and God determines how high we go. Uh, you know what? At this church right here, there's churches all over, dozens of churches all over America, that God's determined their altitude. They run buses. They have a, a Christian school. They um, support missionaries. They have people saved. They, uh, have, they, they help marriages. They help people raise their kids. Uh, they're seeing a teenager say they've got a strong youth group, but whether it be small or not, they've got a strong youth group, and God is blessing them, and yet it, preachers all over America change their direction. They begin to pa ponder the path of their feet. They begin to let their ways that aren't established because they want growth because they look at their their um, uh, mentors in the ministry and they say man I want to get that growth I must be doing something wrong yet the Bible says let all thy ways be established it doesn't say grow a great big church build a great big ministry it simply says let thy ways be established that'd be a good thing to do in a marriage wouldn't it hello That'd be a good thing to do in a marriage, to sit down with your spouse and say, you know what, dear, I wish some of you folks would listen to me. I wish some of you folks, I wish I could go home, I wish I could be, be you women and go home for a while. Well, of course, I wouldn't uh, <laughs> go home for a while and get some sense in your dumb heads, you guys. Some of you guys, listen, some of you guys, listen to me, ready? You're probably going to beat me up after service. I'm going to say it anyway. You're mental homosexuals. Because you want your wife to think like you, react like you, respond like you, laugh what you think's funny, cry when you think it's sad, get mad when you think it's mad, do everything like you, react, do everything like you, and then you just want to smooch on her later. Your mental, hey, 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 it's not that funny. Your mental, listen to me, I help your marriage now. It is sort of funny, though. It is funny. I, if everybody would laugh like that, I'd let you go like that. The rest of them want to laugh like that, too. But I think the problem is some of them feel guilty right now. Because you're always trying to say, why didn't you do it my way? Because she's not you, spud. Or should I say, dud? <laughs> you say, where'd you get that? I sat in Brother Howell's office in 1987. He said, son, you're probably, just what I just now said. He said, you're probably going to get mad at me. Remember that, honey? But he said, he said, you act like a mental homosexual. You better call security, Jack, because I'm after you. I said, Brother Howard, what are you talking about? He said, you're older than your wife. You're more experienced than your wife. You, you, you're, you're, more, uh, you're wiser than your wife. And in your haste, in your haste to try and help your wife mature, you want her to think like you. And he said, it doesn't work that way. Brother Howell's talked to me. He sent Mr. Jackson out of the office. He talked to me for 45 minutes. Man, I cried and cried and cried. And I said, Brother Howell's, my dad never told me some of the things you just told me. I never knew what you just told me. I've never seen it that way. And I had a turning point in my marriage in 1987. And for the last 11 years, it's, we've still had some life's not a bump in the road. It's a bumpy road. And we've still had a bumpy road. But for those first six years, it was H-E double hockey sticks. And for the last 11 years, it's been almost 12 years, it's been a lot better. 
wonder why. Because I finally understood what a wife was all about. And some of you guys ought to get that too. See, you've been married six months or a year or two weeks or five days or two years or three, and you're ready to just toss the towel in. And I, me and my wife and I said, divorce is not an option. It, it doesn't enter into the conversation. We won't allow it to be said. We're not going to talk about it. Now, she's broke the rule a few times, but we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> She's gonna break my neck a few times. What's she gonna do? But uh, and 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 I and we've had arguments. Okay, that's the way it goes. All right, you kids, students, which ones are you going with? You choose who you're going with. Pack my bags. I'm out of here. Blah blah blah. And it's always this way. Here you go. Here's what it always is. It's not I'm sick of you. I want to leave you. It's like all right, that's the way you feel. You'll be better off without me. You know, I just try and get in and feel sorry for yourself. You know, you think I'm such a jerk? I'll just leave. And you keep hoping they'll say you're not a jerk. And they're saying like that's what I think. All right. <laughs> That's exactly what I think. Oh, by the way, don't forget your keys. You know, now, now, oh, I, I, I'm getting close to home right now. I can feel it. You're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. And people think they're failures. They're always trying to think something. That this ought to be like that. Do you know, listen, you know what? You want to determine uh, uh, the attitude of this church? A Desi, is your last name Maneer? Do, that's right, Doza. Uh, uh, Thoza, Thoza. Thoza, yeah, Ray, Thoza, your mama. Desi came to our church, oh, four months ago, maybe. Said she was an atheist. One of the most hateful, spiteful, outwardly appearing girls we've had here in a long time. Hush up and stop talking. Hey, you, Junior, Junior. You don't know it, but I got a button up here. If I push it, a big, sharp spike shoots up right underneath you. <laughs> Okay, my finger's right next to it now. You better smile. All right. And um, uh, uh, she came here, sat on the front row. She liked Marilyn Manson. She was, I'm an atheist, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Inside of her, there was somebody who just never had had her ways established. Just kept preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. And eventually she got saved. And then a few weeks after that, maybe a couple months after that, I'm not sure, she got baptized. And then you know what she said out to me in the, in the parking lot today? She came up to me and she said, uh, Pastor, how can you learn to be one of these soul winner things? How can I be a soul winner? Amen. Now, she's went, she's went from a so-called atheist. I don't even believe there's real atheists in the world myself. But she's went from being a so-called atheist, Marilyn Manson addict, to saying, what is, I want to learn more about this. So, and I said, first thing is get your handful of tracks, pass them out, do whatever you got, and learn and ride the night bus and begin to learn. Now, how did that happen? That happened because the church said our attitude is more important than our altitude. And the attitude eventually determines the altitude. Number three, the altitude is determined by God. Number four, number four, uh, uh, do not mistake activity for life. Do not mistake activity for life. Activity is being busy, but life begets life a la Desi Thoza. Life begets life, and life produces fruit. That's why, watch, that's why we're not going to call it visitation. We're going to call it soul winning. Amen. That's why I don't tell people I work in a ministry. I say I pastor a church. I don't say, well, I'm in the ministry. I say, I'm in, I pastor a church. Now, I am in the ministry. I'm not going to criticize people to say that. But I don't want to even come close in mentally to watering down. Well, we don't say, we don't uh, have a, well, we're gonna, come join. Where's my bulletin at? Read the bulletin. Every visitor walks in and gets it. It says 11 a.m. preaching service. It doesn't say praise and exaltation time for the kingdom of God's children. It doesn't say junk like that. We don't say, welcome ambassadors. Welcome ambassadors to the embassy. We don't say that dumb junk. Yes, we're ambassadors for Christ, but this ain't no embassy, dummy. This is a church, amen? Jesus didn't die for the embassy. He died for the church. It's called Three Rivers Baptist Church. Not Hope Ministries, but Three Rivers Baptist Church. Not Three Rivers Baptist Ministries, but Three Rivers Baptist Church. And by the way, I'm gonna, after, as soon as I do through this missions thing, I'm going to teach you again about being a Baptist. I'm going to pass some stuff out to you. And if you can read that and you can't agree with what, the, what you can't agree with history, then you're just a stubborn ig, igno, igmo, amen? You are a stubborn person if you can't read that and say, bless God, I can see it for myself. It's documented history. This is where the church came from. That's why we don't call it a, a, a praise and worship service. Come magnify him with me. No, I magnify him at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I had worship service this morning, did you? It wasn't 11 o'clock here. I had a praise and worship service this morning at my couch in my study at about uh, uh, 5 o'clock this morning. By 5 o'clock, I was wound up tighter than a, a $3 watch, amen? 
And we were praising. I was getting with it, me and the Holy Spirit. I was praising God. I was thanking God. I couldn't get over how good God's been to me. We don't call it a praise and worship service. We call it church preaching service. Amen. Now, don't, and don't try and get all spiritual. Oh, doesn't the Bible say, come, let us magnify the Lord, let us exalt his name together, let us lift his praises up to heaven. Yes, we're supposed to do that, but it's a lot easier to do it in church. Thank you. Number one, attitude is more important than altitude. Number two, attitude eventually determines altitude. Number three, altitude is determined by God. Number four, don't mistake activity for life. Number five, and I'm, I'm getting ready to close right now. Number five, find the church going in the right direction and jump in with both feet. Find the church going in the right direction and jump in with both feet. Why? Because it's safe. Why? Because it's not changing. Why? Because the, the path of the feet and the ways have been established, and it's been established they're not turning to the right hand or the left. It's not, uh, it's not, the church may not move as fast as you want it to or as fast as you expect it to. Uh, you know, I, we went to soul winning clinic and, and there's guys, there's men, pastors, they take their men to soul winning clinic every year. And there's no doubt in my mind, those guys, I already, I know, I know what I'm talking about too. First hand experience, men go down and women too. They go down there and they go to the three, uh, uh, Longview Baptist temple and they come back home and they expect their pastor to be Bob Gray. Well, I ain't Bob Gray, man. And by the way, Bob Gray's not my pastor, and Bob Gray's not your pastor, unless you're a member of Longview Baptist. Well, Bob, Brother Howell's my pastor. No, he's not, not unless you're a member of First Baptist Church of Hammond. Everybody can run around with it. They can say whatever they want. Well, Brother Howell's my pastor. Unless you're a member of First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, Bob, Jack Howell's is not your pastor. Amen. And guys go over there to pastor school. Oh, they called to preach, and they end up moving to Hammond, Indiana. And then what they do is they move over there. They funk out of school because they weren't called to preach, and they stay there in the church. And 20 years from now, they're still at First Baptist Church of Hammond. Amen. Why? Because they went over there, and they fell in love with the ministry, and they fell in love with a man instead of falling in love with their ministry. There's a reason you're here, bub. There's a reason you're here, Jack and Jill. There's a reason you're here. God put you in this church for a reason. You're supposed to be here. You're supposed to teach a class someday. Did you know that? Did you know you're not supposed to sit here for 10 years and never do, never teach a class, never sing a solo, or not a solo, some of us, but never sing or never teach or never work a bus route or never work the altar or never work a baptismal changing room or never be a usher, never be a money counter? God called you here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. You're here to do a job. Now, if this church is going in the right direction, direction jump in the water's fine Amen. it's not going to change we may not move as fast as you might want it to we may not move as fast as you expect it to you may say bless god i want to be in a 747 church well this church not going to run 10,000. i doubt very seriously we'll ever run 10,000. we may god may do it i doubt we will we may do it i don't expect to if we do it it'll be uh, ephesians 320 beyond my furthest dream more than i ever could expect or believe that god could do or would do with me but we may run 500 we may run 700 we may run a thousand we may run 1500 but i'll tell you this we are going to ponder the path of our feet we're going to let all our ways be be established and we're not moving to the right hand or the left so well i just want to be part of a 747 church well you're going to go to 747 church you won't help it out because your attitude's wrong your attitude's wrong what was point number one attitude is more important than altitude and if your eyes is on altitude 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 you'll blow it we've had visitors come to this church before and they look at our altitude why? Because they're not looking at attitude and direction. They're looking for altitude, and they leave here and go to some bigger church. Why? Because they're more interested in altitude than attitude, but altitude is not important as attitude. Attitude, direction is the key. So find the church in the right direction and jump in. I'll tell you this. It may not move as fast as you want or expect. I may not grow as a pastor as fast as you want or expect, but I'll say this. It'll keep moving in the right direction. Now, let me throw this in there too. Sometimes you folks come in for counsel and you don't, you don't, you know, you got some problem you built up for years and years and years, and, and one counseling session doesn't change it. I mean, you need you know you need to walk around with a psychiatrist in both hands to ever get help. I mean, you're so you're so you've let the world get you so bad, and you because I don't change it in one time, you think, oh, if I could get to Brother Hiles, he'd change it. Brother Howes will tell you the same thing I do. Why? Because I sit there behind. Before you walk in, I lock the door and I get up, get out my Brother Howes book. Okay, what do I say? What's the problem? Okay, this is what Brother Howes will say. I write myself little notes. I tape them to my desk like this. You think I'm kicked back in the desk, relax? I'm kicked back looking at my notes. Well, Brother Howes says this. I look at you and say that. And you look at me and say, well, I don't know if that'll really work. That's exactly what Brother Howes said to say. You dummy. Amen.
Well, Brother Howes, Brother Howes could help me. No, Brother Howes couldn't. Jesus couldn't help you. Because Jesus sent you to a counselor, a pastor who loves you, and he, I'm telling you everything I know that Brother Howes has said. Everything I got, listen, I don't have anything original. Very little Doug Jackson original. Well, everything you know about me came from that guy and that guy, and well, not very much that guy, but that guy and that guy and that guy and that guy especially, and that man especially, those two fellas right there, and I've read a book on him. I've read all, a big old book by him and uh, that man right there. Everything you get from Doug Jackson is these men. It's not Doug Jackson. I'm not original. He said, well, I want to go to a church where the pastor's original. Go ahead, bud, and you're going to get somebody who is uh, turned to the right hand or the left because his ways aren't established. Hey, hey, don't forget that spike. Now, now, find the church in the right direction and jump in. Now, let me say this, too. Just as we started out talking who wrote this, Solomon, to his son named Rehoboam, just as this works for a church, so it works for your life, your marriage, your child rearing, so it works for your life. What's that mean? It means the direction you're going is more important than how high you are. Some of you guys want your husband to be way up here, but he's going in the right direction. Some of you guys want your wife to be way up here. Altitude's not the important thing, bud. Attitude and direction is. It's attitude. It's attitude. It's attitude. It's attitude. It's not the altitude, it's the attitude. That's why my wife stayed with me all those years. That's why my wife has followed me. Honey, we're going to, we're going to, we're married. We got a nice place to live. I got a four-wheel drive, Willie's Jeep. She's got a, a car, Ghetto Galaxy. We call it a Ford 72 Galaxy, you know. And uh, she drove our Ghetto Galaxy, and I drove uh, that Willie's Jeep. It was red. It was a nice big old four-wheel drive. Drove it all red. And honey, we're going to sell everything we got and go to college. Okay, honey, I'm wherever you go, I'm going. And we get out of college and say, okay, honey, we're going we're gonna to move to California, 2,500 miles from here. Okay, honey, I, if that's what you say, we're going. We get out there, and uh, 22 months later, say, okay, honey, we're leaving California. We're going back to Hobart. She was like uh, uh, Sarah following Abraham all over the place. All right, honey, that's where you say we're going. We get back there in the summer of uh, 92, and in the uh, winter of 93, about 17, 18 months later, I say, okay, honey, we're moving now. In fact, August, September, October, November, so 16 months later, I say, now we're going to move over to Fort Wayne, Indiana. We didn't know anybody over here. We'd never been here. Well, we'd come surveyed a couple times, but we'd never been here. We didn't know anybody. We, we didn't have to have anything over here. She said, okay, honey, I'll follow. You know why? Because she knew my direction was right. She knew my attitude was right. She knew the direction I was headed was right. It wasn't the altitude I was flying at. Sometimes I flew high. Sometimes we were barely off the ground. I mean, sometimes we were bumping the ground, and I think she looked down the runway and said, man, is he going to get this crate off the ground? And trees were looking mighty large. Is he going to get it up? And she just went, ah, we got it off the ground. How did he do it? There are many times that happened in our life. But she stayed with me. Why? Because my attitude was right. My direction was right. She knew I was going to serve God. She knew I was going to do something stupid. The reason we left California, you know why we left California? The altitude was good, but the direction was wrong. The direction was going wrong. And I was wise enough, watch this. The Bible says, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. And as soon as I saw the direction that Brother Rule and the church, some things were going on, and I saw the direction, I said, wait a minute, these ways are not established. And I went to Brother Rule and said, you understand, da, 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 da. are you planning on changing? No, no, that was his new established way. No, no, we're not changing. This is the way we're going to go. Well, then I'm not going to go that way with you. And I'm not letting my family go there. We're not going that way. We're not going that way. We're not going to do it. And we left in the middle of the year. No money. No, I mean, it was, it was a hairy situation. Scary situation, but God saw us through. You know why? Because the direction of our life. Now, the same thing for a church works in a life. What is your direction today? What is the direction of your life today? What is the direction? Well, I don't hide, but I don't fly very high. I'm just not a very good Christian. Is the direction in the right? Are you going the right direction? He said, well, I'm not moving very fast. Are you going the right direction? Because attitude or direction eventually determines your altitude. You're going to eventually, God is going to be determined by, how, by which way you go on how high you fly. Are you reading your Bible more? Are you praying? Are you reading your Bible, period? Are you praying? Are you faithful to church? Do you carry tracts with you? Do you witness? Do you, do you carry tracts with you? Do you witness? Do you carry tracts with you? Do you witness, I said? Do you carry tracts with you? Do you sing? Are you more forgiving than you used to be? Are you more thankful and grateful than you used to be? Do you love God more? Do you love others more? 
You say, preacher, I'm just not moving as fast as you like, as uh, I'd like. You say, you're not, preacher, I'm just not moving as fast as I'd like to be moving. I just, I'm just not going very fast. Let me ask you this. Are you going in the right direction? Now, if you're going in the right direction, you're going to end up in the right place. Remember that deep statement I told you? Which way you're headed is where you end up. Which way you're headed is where you're going to end up. Not too deep. Pretty simple. Now, you say, preacher, it sounds so simple. All you got to do is follow this verse. Ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Now, if you'll do that, you'll, turn, you'll come out in the right place. Rehoboam didn't do it. Rehoboam said, no, I'm not going to do that. What happened to Rehoboam? Lost the kingdom. Lost a lot of things. Really, really destroyed his life. Why? He didn't do what the Bible, his father, said. This will work in a young life. It'll work in a young church. It'll work in an old life. You say, I'm 50 years old, preacher. What about me? You just got in church. You just really decided lately to be, man, I'm just, you just decided I'm going to live for God. You just decided, all right, start today. Start today. Don't ponder, uh, yes, ponder the path, ponder the direction you're going. Think about where, listen, think about where you're going. Now, let me say this, and I'm all done. I'll close my Bible so you know I'm telling the truth. Uh, you say, say, well, how, what do you mean, ponder the path of thy feet? Let all thy ways be established. Turn not the right, turn not the right hand nor the left. Uh, uh, um, uh, let all thy ways be established. Ponder, ponder not the right, left. Let all the ways be established for thee. What, what, where, what do you mean where I'm going is where I'm ending up? Let me tell you where you're going to end up. Let me tell you where you're going to end up. Here's where you're going to end up one day. Man, this line takes a long time. Whew, that boy got torched. Oh, he's smiling about that guy. Here's where you can end up. The judgment seat of Christ. Now you better look down the road and see what's going to happen at the judgment, because that's all I care about. I ain't worried about I'm worried about when I face Jesus. I'm not worried about it, but that's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking at. That's the end of my road. That's the end of my life. Death is not the end. That judgment seat of Christ is the end. When I stand before him, I want to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Be thou faithful over many. Because I don't have many talents, but i got a few, and I want to be faithful with what I've got. Now, that's, now, you look ahead. Don't you try and say, Well, if I do it this way, my life will turn out okay. No, you better figure out what's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ. Will that turn out okay? Because that's where we're all going, the judgment seat of Christ. So, so don't turn off. Let all thy ways be established. Don't turn off the left hand. Don't turn off to the right hand. You look. Let thine eyelids look. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee, and thy eyes look right on. And you keep your eyes right on the prize, the high calling, and the prize in Christ Jesus. When you stand before Jesus Christ, He can say, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." He is not going to deter. He's not going to get on you about your altitude. He's going to get on you about your attitude and the direction you were moving. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you.